Hello everyone, back to you in today's first video, doing JMA Friday for today's first video. As always on a Friday, we're having a look at the weather for the month ahead, and we're going to go into December uh, with this video. Now, I've only got the Japanese model uh, for this one. We haven't got a CFS V2, so because um, it hasn't updated for about three days. Uh, so what I thought we'd do is add in the Beijing Climate Centre uh, to this one. So instead of the CFS V2 and JMA, it's going to be the JMA and the Beijing Climate Centre for uh, today's JMA Friday update. So um, it's going to take you well into uh, December in any case. We'll see what the two models are showing uh, for the rest of November and and into uh, December. Now, for the past couple of uh, days, last few days, we've been uh, having hints that we might get some sort of blocking feature getting going over uh, Greenland and possibly pushing the winds into the north in the latter stages of November. We will see what uh, these long range models have to say about that. Uh, but later on this afternoon, I'll bring you up to date with all the latest on the uh, prospects of uh, a cold spell of Arctic weather in the uh, latter stages of November. I'll show you what the latest is from the GFS and ECWF models. And we'll sort of do a week to 10 day update this afternoon. But we're going to begin today with JMA Friday, so let's get on with it. And we're going to uh, start off with the uh, Japanese models. So we've got 500 bit of our height and all is broken down into weekly peers from the pole view down. So the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere uh, is just there, and then the middle latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere around there, the British Isles, perhaps most importantly for this video, is uh, just there. So 500 bit of our 10,000 feet is an area in the absolute high pressure, low pressure, I've been moved around by the jet stream, and that essentially is what weather is. It's the movement of air masses uh, by the jet stream. As these air, air masses move around, so you get um, increases or decreases in precipitation, and also you get increases or decreases in uh, temperature as well. So we've got the uh, week one 500 bit of our height anomaly here. This is taking us from the 10th through to the 17th of uh, November. And we find that we've got a ridge out to our west southwest. We've got below average heights up to the north and also extending down uh, to the east as well. And doing something like back the flow with the jet stream. So the jet stream is backing towards the west in the week ahead, which is a slightly milder. Uh, direction. Also, the reason amount of dry weather down in the south, but it would be more unsettled with the influence from that jet stream uh, up in the north. Now, week two uh, looks like this. This is taking us from the 17th through to the 24th of November. And look at this. The uh, JMA is going for a very big blocking feature here to be centering itself in around Greenland and also extending up into the Arctic. So the JMA is definitely seeing the chance of some significantly colder conditions uh, as we go through into the second half of November. We've got below average heights over the UK and extending into Europe as well. Uh, the jet stream and the flow, rather complicated, but I think we're doing something uh, a little bit like that. So let's start from there. And we're going around rather like that. So we are placed on the cold side of the jet stream. And within this trough, with this blocking feature here, we would be entrenching colder air, or cold air, into this trough of uh, low pressure. That is over the UK, northwest parts of Europe. So that could be quite a cold phase there, I would have thought, uh, from the 17th to the 24th of November. And then we go through to weeks three and four, which takes us from the 24th of November to the 8th of December. And no real change here, actually. So uh, we continue to have, I mean, we, we reduce the blocking signature, uh, blocking signal. Um, but that's because it's a two weekly anomaly. But we still have quite a strong uh, blocking signal, actually, centering around Greenland. Uh, and we still have this signal for Blair Bridge Heights low pressure to be in the northwest of Europe, particularly centering over the UK. So again, I think we're probably doing something like that with the jet stream and with the flow. And again, we should be entrenching cold air into that trough of uh, low pressure. So to me, weeks two and weeks three, four are all suggesting the chance of some quite cold conditions to be coming through at times. And we do have quite a strong blocking feature there 
to uh, the south of Greenland. We also have this area below average heights coming out of the east coast of America. So that could be doing something like an undercut underneath that block. And I think uh, essentially that's feeding this trough that's just here over the UK. But those uh, anomaly charts, um, week two and then weeks three and four, they are suggesting to me the chance of some quite cold weather there as we're going into the second half of November and the early part of December. So let's see what the tropical and mid latitude view is doing in terms of temperature and precipitation anomalies for the next month. So this is the uh, week one. Uh, chart, which is up here in the top right hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. This is the equator uh, of the uh, Earth just there. Northern Hemisphere is here and Southern Hemisphere is here. The poles, which we can't see, are off the chart. South Pole is uh, down there. North Pole, we're just looking at the North Pole view down, so we don't need to see it again. North Pole is uh, just there. The only thing to say about that is that you're not going to be able to see the blocking signals that we've got over Greenland in weeks two and weeks three and four on this view. Uh, but of course, we've already looked at So we know there is quite a lot of extensive blocking being forecast by JMA for uh, the second half of uh, November, and potentially even lasting into the start of December. So, a uh, reminder of the week one, 500 with a high tonic, with a reach down to the southwest, doing something like that with the flow and with the jet stream. So, uh, the cold trough is across central and eastern parts of Europe in the week ahead. We are close to that ridge. Temperature anomalies in the week ahead, despite that, it's quite a westerly flow, actually coming out a little bit cooler than average. I would have thought that would be a, a slightly milder than average week, but the JMA is suggesting the week ahead is a little bit cooler than average. And the precipitation anomaly is coming out drier than average. So quite a cool but dry week uh, coming up. Then we go through to uh, week two, which is the 17th to 24th of November. Now, you can just about see that blocking feature. It's with those orange and red colours just there. We know it extends back up to Greenland and even further north up here, somewhere up to the Arctic. Then that trough is centred over the UK and much of Western Europe as well. It looks like it should be a cold pan. Actually, the model isn't seeing particularly cold temperature anomalies. They're close to average, maybe even slightly above. And I think that looks very, very, very dubious in terms of that 500 millibar height anomaly. If you have 500 millibar height anomaly like that, uh, I'll go back to the Northern Hemisphere view, the North Pole view, I should say, if you've got a 500 millibar height anomaly like that, you would have a colder than average week. So why the model is showing miles than average, I'm not sure. It just must be a little bit biased in terms of being on the warmer side of things. These are climate models as well as being uh, weather models. So um, forget that. It should be colder than average week based on its 500 millibar height anomaly. And also unsettled as well with above average precipitation. That does make sense because there's a cold trough sitting over the country. So unsettled for week two. But um, take two or three degrees off that temperature anomaly, it's too warm. And then we go through to weeks three and four, which is the 24th through of November through to the 8th of December. And there wasn't any real change, it's just that the blocking signal is reduced slightly. But we do still have a blocking signal around Greenland. We still have that trough over the UK as well. Temperature anomalies, again, are nothing to get excited about there around or even maybe hinting at being slightly above average, which again looks totally wrong based on the height anomaly that the model is going for. That height anomaly, again, that should be, you would have uh, assumed, be producing colder than average temperature anomalies in weeks three and four. So the warm bias that you get with these long range models is in evidence there for weeks two and for weeks three and weeks four as well. And the precipitation anomaly, again, that's coming out above average in weeks three and four. So forget those temperature anomalies. Focus on the heights and the models seem to be going for significant blocking in the second half of November and possibly even lasting start of December, which would be delivering, would deliver colder than average conditions, whatever the model says it would do, and it would also be quite unsettled as well. So the signal from the JMA for the next month is starting off 
Well, actually, the coldest anomaly, funnily enough, is in the week ahead, and that looks a little bit dubious as well. But overall, I think the model is going for quite a cold uh, month ahead. Finally, let's have a look at Beijing Climate Center. So I haven't got a CFS thing to it. It hasn't updated since Tuesday, I don't think. So I'm not sure what's going on. <coughs> uh, excuse me, what's going on there. But we'll have a look at the Beijing Climate Centre instead. So these are the 500 millibar heights broken down to 10-day periods this time. The first 10-day period takes us from the 11th through to the 20th of uh, November. So for the uh, coming 10 days, we've got this area above average heights out to our west. And we're doing something like that with the flow. Actually, pretty good agreement between the uh, JMA and the Beijing Climate Centre for the weekend. But remember, this is 10 days, 10-day uh, anomaly rather than a seven-day anomaly. But in any case, very similar pattern, really. Uh, above average heights just out to our west, but a trough of below average heights uh, in eastern parts of Europe. So the coldest um, temperatures, anomalies to average are in the east. We have an influence from the uh, Atlantic, albeit the flow would be on a northwest-southeast trajectory. So uh, doing something a little bit like that. So it's not going to be a heat wave. It's not going to be warm. But uh, it'll probably be quite cold. And a fair amount of dryish weather as well. Uh, we go through to the second 10-day uh, anomaly. And that takes us from the 21st through to the 30th of November. Heights pushing up to the north then. Uh, so we've got a blocking feature to our north. Looks like it should be turning the winds into the east. So that implies we're bringing in chance of easterly winds there as we go through into the end of November. The next 500 millibar height anomaly takes us from the 10 days from the 1st through to uh, the 10th of December and above average heights again centering around the UK uh, possibly still a little bit of a flow from uh, the east as well although that may be more to ourselves. In any case, that still looks like quite a dry, cold scenario. Uh, would be a lot of frost coming in with that, I would have thought. And then we go through to the final 10-day anomaly, which takes us from days 31 to 40. We go from the 11th through to the 20th of December. And all change then, below average heights developing out to the west. Low pressure is coming back there through the middle part of the December, doing something like that, the flow and with the jet stream as well. Uh, that's turning more unsettled. Probably not overly warm either, because I think we're still bringing in the air from the northern part of the Atlantic Ocean. So it's just turning more unsettled and still remaining uh, quite cool there, I would have thought. Temperature anomalies for the next 10 days are coming out warmer than average from the 11th to the 20th of November. Uh, and then we go through to the next 10 day anomaly where winds appear to be swinging into the east. So I'm not sure why, again, the model should be going for temperature anomalies between 1 and 2 degrees above average. That looks far too warm. Uh, based on the uh, 500 millibar height anomaly that model is going for. Uh, we go through to the next 10 day period, the 1st through to the 10th of December. Again, mild and average. So if we take the model at face value with its temperature anomalies, we're in for a very mild month of it. Um, notice much of Europe coming out colder than average, however. And I think that uh, particularly... This 10-day period, so the 21st to the 30th, and then the next 10-day period, the 1st to the 10th of December, both of those, based on the 500 mm height anomaly charts, should be colder than average. So again, we see the warm bias within the model at work here. And then we go through to the final 10-day uh, period, which takes us from the 11th to the 20th of December, and that, again, is coming out mild and average, which is possible because the wind is reverting back to the Atlantic, albeit it did look like it's coming from a northerly source in the Atlantic Ocean. Precipitation anomalies for uh, the next 10 days, the 11th, 20th of November, drier than average. Driving an average also in the, in the final 10 days of November, takes us from the 21st to the 30th of November, that comes out drier than average too. And again, significantly driving an average in the next 10-day period, the 1st to the 10th of December. And then we go through to the final 10-day period, which is the 11th to the 20th of December. And we go a little bit wetter than average as it turns much more unsettled. 
a real mixed bag there. I think we've got to focus on the height anomalies and kind of forget the uh, temperature and precipitation anomalies. Well, the precipitation uh, is in line with what models show, but I think we forget the temperature anomalies. Let's go with the heights. Both models are suggesting quite significant blocking features to be setting up to the north as we go through into the final week or 10 days of November, which, if it does happen... And that, of course, is the uncertainty. Will those blocking features set up? Uh, if they don't set up, then everything else is uh, going to be different. But if those blocking features do set up, as these two models are showing, their temperature anomalies are wrong, their temperature anomalies are too warm, it will be a cold final week to 10 days of November. And then over to December, and the hints are there that at least the first week or so of December, this blocking might extend out into that period as well, possibly giving us a cold start to December, before maybe around later in the month, middle of the month, we start to turn things milder and more unsettled. But that's a very, very long uh, way off and uh, I don't think we should uh, think too much about that. So in terms of the long range models, they are both still seeing we haven't got CFSV2, but uh, certainly the JMA, Beige Line, etc. both still seeing a chance of blocking features getting going to our north in the second half of November uh, and that would I'm sure deliver us some quite cold weather at times. And that uh, rounds off JMA Friday for this week. Remember, long-range forecast is always highly experimental, so um, it could all look very different next week. And this afternoon, later on, in an hour or so, here on the homepage, we'll have today's second video, when I'll bring you up to date with the very latest from the JMA, uh, from, I should say, the ECMWF and the GFS. Shorter-range models. We'll have a week to 10-day update seeing if this cold spell is moving any further towards us uh, in the coming days. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.